Cotton plant. Scientific name, Gossypium. Cotton is a flowering plant in the melo family, native to tropical and subtropical regions of Africa, India, and the Americas. The original species are Gossypium habesium, found in the Nile Valley, Nubia, Sudan. Gossypium arboretum, found in the Nile Valley and in India. Gossypium babadens, found in the Americas, that is in the Barbados Islands. Among technical crops, the first place is said to belong to cotton, that is according to Mokhtar. It was unknown in ancient Egypt, but there are many indications that its cultivation in the Nile Valley started in the empire of Kush before the beginnings of our era. Evidence from earlier times is scanty, but about the 4th century BCE, the cultivation of cotton and the knowledge of its spinning and weaving in Meroe reached a very high level. It is even maintained that the export of textiles was one of the sources of wealth in Meroe. The oldest archaeological cotton samples recorded in the period between 2600 and 520 before Common Era are the species of Gossypium arboreum that was found in Mohenjo-Daro in India between 2500 and 1700 BCE. It was found in the form of textile and string. Gossypium babadens found in Huaca Prieta, that is North Peru, between 2400 BC and 1500 BC, found in the form of fishing nets, lampwick, and textile. Gossypium arboreum, found in Meroe, Sudan, between 300 BC and 300 AD. Next is Gossypium arboreum, a Sudanese variety, found in Karanog, Nubia, and Egypt between 300 and 300 AD. It was found in the form of textile wrappings. And finally, Gossypium habesium and arboreum, which are said to be the oldest species, especially the habesium, found in Nubia and Egypt between 2600 and 2400 BC and it was found in the form of seeds in animal dung, but evidence shows that it was found in form of textiles, lampwicks, fishing nets. The University of Warwick DNA analysis of 1,600-year-old cotton has cleared up the mystery of where ancient Egyptian cotton was domesticated. Archaeologists were at first unsure whether ancient Egyptians had imported domesticated cotton from the Indian subcontinent or whether they were growing a native African variety that had been domesticated locally. So using the latest DNA analysis, a new study by the same university confirms that seeds taken from the site in Egypt, Upper Nile, were of the Habesium variety native to African, rather than arboreum, which they said is native to the Indian subcontinent. The site Kasser Ibrim is located about 40 kilometers from Abu Simbel and 70 kilometers from the modern Sudanese border on the east bank of what is now Lake Nasser. The best preserved materials have been uncovered in an island currently named Kasser Ibrim, Pa rim and all the Luos here know what pa means. It just means place of. Kasser Ibrim. Kasser Ibrim was declared an archaeological site after it defied the intentional flooding of the Nile to create Lake Nubia or Lake Nasser. Lake Nubia covers ancient Nile Valley metropolis with highly valuable temples and it is the reservoir for the Aswan Dam. The Aswan Low Dam construction started in 1899 to 1902, leading to the displacements of hundreds of thousands of local inhabitants. Some of the inhabitants are currently in Kenya, 
So as the government increased the dam water levels in 1912 and 1933, more of the native population was displaced. We identified the African variety of G. herbaceum, which suggests that domesticated cotton was not a cultural input. It was a technology that had grown up independently in Africa. As well as archaeological evidence, the use of cotton in Egypt and along the Nile Valley has been documented by classical authors. So cotton was said to have been cultivated in Nubia, which is modern-day northern Sudan, by Pliny in the 1st century AD and by Pollux in the 2nd century AD. The same study also found what scientists believe is the first evidence of punctuated evolution, long periods of evolutionary stability interpassed by bursts of rapid change having occurred in major crop groups. So the South American cotton of the closely related G. Babadens variety showed genomic stability between the two samples, even though they were separated by more than 2,000 miles in distance and 3,000 years in time. So the Babadens variety that is found in Peru is said to have evolved from the Habitian variety in Africa. Now we'll look at um, the UNESCO site. So the kiosk at Ketasi, re-erected by the UAR Antiquities Service, temples of Aksha, sculptured blocks, removed and transported to the new Museum of Khartoum in Sudan, thanks to the financial contribution of plants, and the tomb of Deuti Otep at Debera East, painted scenes in the first chambers were cut out and taken to a new museum in Khartoum by the Sudanese Antiquities Service. Temple of Buhen was dismantled and transported to the new museum at Khartoum through financial contributions by the UK and the USA. The Horus Temple is an example of this. The Horus Temple at Buhen in Sudan National Museum was hauled to its current location using a truck. So basically they dismantled the temple and moved it. Now this magnificent architecture is currently at the bottom of Lake Nubia, covered by water. It was estimated to have been built in circa 1680 BCE using dating technology available in the 18th century. So one can only guess how old it probably is, definitely more than what you currently see on your screen. Another temple of Nile Valley architecture is the fort at Megisa, originally called Iken, dated circa 1680. And again, I do believe these temples were much older than that. And here we see architecture at Migisa or Riken, where some of the oldest cotton was found. And also to point out that Luo architecture was not always temporary mud houses with thatched roof. Initially, there were permanent structures, but as people migrated to various places and lack of stability, hence the new structures. So apart from cotton, our ancestors used wool and linen fabric. Here are some sample fabric found at Migisa. Uses of cotton, it was used in fishing nets, lamp wicks, curtains, as you can see there, there's a piece of cotton, parts of clothing, this is a tile, and um, undetermined use. And if you look at that piece of clothing, you can see something that looks similar to what we currently wear. And also you see patterns used by well-established brands, and this is a piece of clothing that dates more than 3,000 years old. So cotton distribution, as you can see, cotton seeds have been found in various areas, including the Middle East and the Levant. Uh, it doesn't mean that the crop was grown in those areas. Even if it was grown, it was in small scale or just as well. The first domestication is evidence has been found in Meroe, Sudan, where it was grown and cultivated even for large scale use.
in large scale purposes, including curtains at temples. So that just tells you the advancement in the use. And when Pelin went to Meroe in the first century, he said he'd never seen something like that. Now, the main cultivation started in Meroe, and uh, we see movement eastwards and westwards. So the Barbadens variety, as we said, is cotton encountered in the Barbados, right around where you see that carving arrow go. And that's as far from Africa, from the origin as it went, as the cotton plant went. And that also goes to show the immigration routes, how people travel to various destinations. Here we see a Phoenician merchant thought to be trading in cotton fabric with an Indian man. And that is probably how uh, the cotton growing and trading routes began. Here's a copy of a pictograph of two women in ancient Egypt using a horizontal loom at the tomb of Kamenhotep. And this is at the border between Sudan and Egypt, so the Nile Valley area. So here's an example of a spindle that was found in the Blue Nile area and was used for spinning cotton. So the ceramic spindle wall is where the spindle was placed in order to stabilize it and then cotton was spun around it. And uh, we also have clay loom weights that were used to weigh down the looms uh, during weaving. So here's a sample of a magnified woven cotton found in Karanog, close to Kasir Ibrim. And this dates roughly 3,000 years. So it goes to show how advanced the weaving process was way back in the day. So cotton found in Huaca Prieta, Peru, circa 2,500 before common era. Also, we see a process of dyeing cotton in ancient Egypt. So I assume it's tie and dye there. And we also see uh, Egyptian and Sudanese people in cotton clothing. And some of this type of clothes, we see them at the present moment. For example, the tights the lady is wearing. And some of them were seamless. So nothing is really new under this sun. Everything fashion goes in a circular pattern. So now we're seeing images of Merker, Nefertiri, and two ladies wearing some fashionable attire dated approximately 2040 to 1782 BCE. We also see other statues approximately from the same era. And uh, what I want to point out is what the gentleman is carrying. It actually looks like some modern rucksack, and even the basket looks very modern to me. And they're said to have been wearing cotton or linen, but the other statue in the middle is wearing cotton. Uh, between 1930 and 1959, these are the areas that you had cotton growing in Africa, from Sudan, Uganda, Congo, Mozambique, Nigeria, Tanganyika, Chad, Central African Republic, Togo, Angola, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Sudan, Mali, Nyasaland, that is Malawi, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Zimbabwe, Cote d'Ivoire, and Benin. And these are the areas of migration that was shown earlier in the map. According to Migli's, that is one of the things that fueled his interest in studying textiles because they were seeing these things being excavated, knowing they were more than 3,500 years old, but were baffled as to how the Egyptians were producing them when the mills in Bolton were struggling to produce something so good. Subscribe, like, and share, and we'll see you in our next one. Thank you. Thank you.